better quicker. I think the fan base more supportive. And I wonder when they start letting fans back into parks, if we'll really be able to tell a big difference in the number of Oriole fans there on opening day and the number of Oriole fans there once they allow fans back in the park. Uh, Yankee fans and Red Sox fans, they flood Camden Yards. When I've been to watch games in person in Baltimore, there are more away fans there than home fans when it's the Yankees, when it's the Red Sox. Not a long drive to take and they're there. I can see more Nats fans. And don't you know that would just... Blah! Can you imagine? Orioles' ownership with all the controversy they've had over television rights and the whatnot, if there are more Nats fans in Camden Yards than Orioles fans. But they've got no one in the short term. When I heard they might get Yasiel Puig a couple weeks ago, I thought, not a good idea. But then I thought, why not? At least they'd have a marquee name player that fans might want to show up and buy a jersey and they could trade him later in the year if somebody needed an outfielder. But of course now that's fallen through too. So I've got the top and the bottom cover. Now let's talk about the three in the middle. And and you know, my fourth place, I'm going to work my way up because I want to save the suspense for two and three. But as I work my way up, I look at the, the three teams remaining. Who's going to finish fourth? And I got to go with the Red Sox. I, I, I just, okay, why do I go with the Red Sox fourth? When I compare the Red Sox to the Rays and to the Jays, the Buffalo Jays or Pittsburgh Jays, who whatever they may be this year, there's no denying the offensive side of the ball in Boston. There's no denying the strength of the offensive side of the ball in Boston. They can so hit. But a few things out of Boston. Erod, who was out with COVID-19, testing positive, back now walking through the gates of friendly Fenway Park, on Saturday, it's now a matter of when will he be able to tow the rubber and give the Red Sox, hopefully, the 18-game winning form that he gave them in 2019. Once he started feeling better, he resumed throwing, although it was at home against a net, but he started throwing, and then on Saturday, he threw a 25-pitch bullpen Session. Erod will not be the opening day starter against the Birds of Baltimore. That will be Nathan E. Evaldi. But when you get past Erod and E. Evaldi, I guess you've heard by now that Colin McHugh signed in the offseason from Houston has now elected not to play in 2020. So Colin McHugh, who I think could have helped this Boston Red Sox pitching staff, is now not playing in 2020. Yet another hit for the Red Sox pitching. Remember, last year's starting staff started with Sale. It started with David Price. It started with Erod. And none of those three will be the day one starter for Boston this year. There were big hopes for Colin McHugh. Now he's sitting out. He signed a one-year deal on March 5th. He will not receive service time this year. Renicky said, Ron Renicky, manager of Red Sox, said, quoting, his arm is not coming around like he had hoped, and he knew that probably he was going to have to spend some time on the IL, and if he was going to do that with what's going on and with the pandemic, he would feel better if he was at home with his family. And that's the decision that he has made. End of quote. 2015, McHugh won 19 games. 2018, as a reliever, a 1.99 ERA in 58 games. Now he will not be in Boston this year. Their strengths, Rafael Devers. A budding superstar, no doubt about it. J.D. Martinez, 
a great hitter. I've read nothing but positive reviews on Jose Peraza, who it looks like now will be the starting second baseman. Remember Peraza two years ago hit 288, stole about 23 bags, and it looks like now he's going to get that opportunity. That's my big word. You know that. He's going to get the opportunity to be the everyday second baseman in Boston. We know about Xander Bogarts. We like their young bats. But it comes down to the pitching. And when you look at, i got to go over this with you. Christian Vasquez behind the plate. Jonathan Lucroy is a backup. I feel pretty good there. Michael Chavez and Moreland in a rotation at first. I feel pretty good about that. Peraza at second. I've just talked about him. Xander, Rafael Devers. In the outfield, Benintendi, Jackie Bradley Jr., Alex Verdugo, and Pilar backing up. I like that. J.D. Martinez, one of the better DHs. But this rotation, Nathan Eovaldi, Martin Perez, Ryan Weber, Brian Johnson. I'm just not a big fan. I got the Red Sox with a losing record this year. I've got the Red Sox at 26 and 34 and in fourth place in the American League East. And you guys who drafted Brandon Workman as your closer, remember, I think Brandon Workman had a career year last year for Boston. I just don't think he can will repeat. I guess he can. I don't think he will repeat the success of a year ago, and I don't think he gets the opportunities either. Think about a closer on a 26-win team, and think about a closer on a 40-win team. Big difference in 2020. Do you take a flyer on him late? Maybe so, but you surely don't go out and draft him early. And tell me a starter on Boston's rotation that you want on your fantasy team right now. Even when Erod is pitching well, Erod is still walking a lot, and now he's not had the repetitions to prepare for the season. And how many times have we seen that when pitchers do not get the work in to get the reps up in spring training, they have trouble starting the year. And in 2020, you cannot have trouble starting the year. So that's my look at the Red Sox, fourth place. So then it comes down to second and third. And I'll, and I'll be honest, I'm really, I'm really mixed on this one. And I'll tell you why. First of all, I think that Hinjin Ryu will be an ace in making in Toronto. Especially with a 60-game season. They've got enough arms... Early on, Nate Pearson is coming. I can hear his footsteps. I can hear the footsteps of Nate Pearson. He is coming and coming quickly. And when you put those two together, and then you look at the rest of the Blue Jays staff, and I want to go over this staff with you. Because I think it's better than advertised. So who do we have? Matt Shoemaker. Matt Shoemaker is a strikeout pitcher and a pretty darn good one when healthy. Matt Shoemaker's problems when he was with Anaheim and last year has not been problems when pitching. It's been the opportunity with health issues to pitch. I think Matt Schumacher can be a good pitcher. I think he will be a good pitcher. Now, Tanner Rorick, he's going to eat innings. I don't think he's an ace by any stretch of the imagination. Their bullpen, Kevin Giles, Ken Giles rather, excuse me, Dolas, Bass, Romano, Gaviglio, Wilmer Font, who's on the 10-day IL. You've got a lot of arms in that bullpen, a lot of young arms. And the offense. The offense is incredible with these young players. Lourdes Gurriel could be an MVP. 
Bo Bichette could be an MVP. Kevin Biggio, a lot of upside, power and speed. We know about Vladdy. I'm a little concerned about him moving to first base if and how much effect that might have on him. But the team can hit. I think they will battle for a potential wild card spot. But I really see them coming in third, a close third, in the American League East. I don't know how much effect the home ballpark disorientation now not playing in Toronto will have on the Blue Jays. Think about the, there's a mental side of this game, guys, and you know that. First of all, you've got players who aren't native to Toronto. They have already gone up probably, rented homes or bought homes and moved families in Toronto, and now they can't play there. So now they've got to move to Buffalo or Pittsburgh or maybe another site. There's even talk they may come to Charlotte, North Carolina. Bring it on. But the lack of stability at this point in the year cannot be a good mental impact on a team. Cannot. So I'm concerned about that. I still think they finished better than the Red Sox. I think they have a winning record. I've got the Jays at 31-29. and 29. Not much of a winning record, but a winning record, which gives me my, second, my first wild card team in the American League, the Tampa Bay Rays. And, and Tampa, when you look at the Rays compared to the Yankees, from a starting pitching perspective, it's darn close. In a bullpen situation, it's really close. I think the pitching staffs, and I'm going to use the term, should everyone be healthy, are really close. Charlie Morton starting opening day. And I think from a talent-wise perspective, Charlie Morton is the third best starter on the Tampa Bay Rays. Now, Charlie Morton's 33. And, you know, he, he, like Garrett Cole in a way, I mean, he morphs in his later years, right? He wasn't as good early. He's gotten really good later. 33 starts last year, 16 and 6, a 305 ERA. And now he is the Rays opening day pitcher. Yanni Chirinos came to Tropicana Field on Sunday. I really like Yanni Chirinos. And I love. The fact that he can start, he can relieve. I can see Chirinos from everything I'm reading being more of a starter this year. Tyler Glasnow returned from positive tests on Tuesday. Last week, after returning on Tuesday, he pitched a simulated game, three and a third innings. From all reports, Blake Snell... No problem with the elbow. So we've got these pitchers who look really good. The bullpen looks really good. And I think what differentiates the Rays then from the Yankees and why they finished second and not first and why I've got them 35 and 25 in the American League East is the lack of that thumper bat. Now, they do have good bats. They have underrated bats. But here's one thing. Their best bat. Austin Meadows starts the year on the IL because of symptoms related to COVID. Jose Martinez will be ready to go and is ready to go, having sat out some time. He will be a plus in that lineup. Zunino will be the catcher. Zunino, when hot, can really hit, but he's got a lot of strikeouts in that bat. They're going to rotate the first base position. G-Man Choi will have the strong side of the platoon. They're talking about Jose Martinez playing some at first base. Brandon Lau will have the strong side of the platoon at second with Joey Wendell and Mike Brousseau filling in there. Willie Adamas will be the shortstop. He played 152 games at shortstop last season and can probably play all 60 this year. Yandy Diaz looks like he will get most of the playing time at third, and I really like Yandy Diaz. If he can get some more loft on his hard-hit balls, more home runs.